And welcome to everyone, bienvenidos to today's core coffee chat on combining helpline and health information resources to meet our community members' needs. I'm Nicole Lezen. I'm one of the local consultants who facilitates a countywide initiative called the Collective of Results and Evidence-Based or Core Investments, along with Nicole Young. We're your host today, and we're joined by Keisha Browder and Chavez, who will be introduced shortly. As you can hear, we, our core institute events are held bilingually in English with Spanish interpretation, thanks to our team members, Stella Lauerman, who provides simultaneous interpretation and translates all of our core materials, and Gisela Carrasco, who's providing consecutive interpretation right now, and will also translate the comments and questions that you have in the chat. And with that, I'll turn it over to Nicole Young, who's gonna give us an overview of core investments. Thanks, Nicole. So CORE stands for the Collective of Results and Evidence-Based Investments. And we consider it both a funding model and a movement to achieve equitable health and well-being in Santa Cruz County using a results-based collective impact approach that's responsive to community needs. And we like to show and remind ourselves of this mission and vision that we're developed for CORE, which are all about collective action and equitable opportunities and thriving. And again, um, equity at the center of that. Next slide. And when we talk about equitable health and well being, really what we mean is that uh, we want all people across the lifespan to have equitable opportunities to experience these eight interconnected and interdependent core conditions for health and well being and reach a state where people's opportunities and their outcomes aren't predictable for better or for worse by things like race, ethnicity, income level, gender identity, sexual orientation, immigration status, or any of those other dimensions of diversity and equity. And so as both a funding model and a movement, CORE provides a framework for us to align our priorities, our programs, our policies, our funding, and our results around community-wide goals and then work together to create these core conditions for health and well-being. And again, you'll see equity at the center of this diagram to illustrate and remind us that we have to examine and address our individual, organizational, and systemic beliefs and practices and structures that are often the very things that perpetuate the inequities that we're trying to eliminate. And so events like today's core coffee chat are offered as part of what we call the core institute for innovation <laughs> and impact or core institute. So think of the core institute as the learning arm of core investments, where we offer an array of training technical assistance and other learning opportunities for people across different sectors. As a way to build the knowledge and skills and systems needed to fulfill our collective vision of an equitable thriving resilient community. And so we are very pleased to welcome our guest presenters today, Keisha Browder, the CEO from United Way, who's going to talk about the 211 program that United Way manages, and uh, Dan Chavez from Skyo that manages is our, our local health information exchange. And so you'll hear more about what that is and what that means and how these two organizations are partnering together. And so with that, we're going to turn it right over to Dan and Keisha. So Dan and Keisha, which one of you wants to get us started here? Take us off, Dan. <laughs> Good morning, all, and thank you for your time this morning. Keisha and I are here and thrilled to be presenting to you as we digitally link our very two important services to make a greater impact. To cover the agenda, Keisha will kick it off with an overview of United Way 211 Santa Cruz County. I'll talk to you about the Serving Communities Health Information Organization. We'll talk about what's going on in our state and some overall macro influences and that what we're going to do together to drive to whole person care and hopefully materially improve health and wellness in our community, and then we'll entertain questions and discussions. And with that, Keisha, please. Mm -hmm. 
Well, good morning, everyone. Buenos dias. So glad to have everyone here today so we can talk about uh, 211 and how we're coming together to be stronger partners for our residents here in Santa Cruz County. Although United Way of Santa Cruz County has been here in this community since 1941, our 211 system is in its teenage years. Launched in 2010, we are the county's front door to connecting Santa Cruz residents with social services, resources, and vital programs, programs that many of you lead and run in our community. 211 is real-time critical support. It's a critical um, real-time support system to connect residents with the health and social supports they need when they need it. When you dial 211, you're going to be on the other, what's gonna happen on the other end is that you're going to get a caring call specialist who's available 24 hours a day, every day of the year. And as we say with 211, we're here to listen and we're here to help. Next slide, please. Just want to share a few uh, highlights from 2022. Just in the past year, over 6,000 calls were made to our local 211. With those 6,000 callers, our call specialists were able to refer nearly 10,000 referrals. Again, referring to programs and agencies that many of you lead. In addition to picking up the phone, you can also text 211. And if you text your zip code to 211211, you again will be with the call specialist who can communicate with you through text. In this past year, 95 of uh, our texters used our texting platform. And although it doesn't show on this slide, you can also access 211 by, uh, on our website, which is 211santacruzcounty.org. Next slide, please. Why do people call <clears throat> 211? Well, with over 10,000 uh, agency programs and services in our database, we just wanted to share with you some of the highlights of why callers were calling. So as you can see with housing alone, you have over 2,500 calls asking for information from housing. And that can range from wanting to know about shelter services to knowing about the affordable housing opportunities here in our, in our county. I won't read all of those, but just wanted to show you why in, two, one, uh, in 2022, why uh, folks did dial 211. Next slide, please. And I turn it over to Dan, who's going to tell you about the Santa Cruz Health Information Organization. Thank you, Keisha. So many of you may not know us because we're a digital entity in the background, but our mission is to connect in a secure and private manner, the medical and wellness information in our community and to exchange that information and make it available to those who need to see it when they need to see it about your health and wellness. We were established in 1996 and oftentimes sit behind the medical records. As such, being established in 1996, we're one of the oldest HIEs or HIOs in the country. We are a not-for-profit managed and owned by a public-private partnership of our community leaders. Next slide, please. But our value proposition is really to present a near real-time 
comprehensive presentation of an individual's health and well-being. And that could be as, as recent as of yesterday. What treatments has this person had? What medications have they been prescribed or have they been issued? Including the social determinants and the social drivers of health. And this is really important. Even if you think about COVID and being diagnosed with COVID and getting treatment for COVID, it's important for the care provider to know what your existing conditions are before any prescriptions are made. So this is a digital organization that serves today just Santa Cruz County. Next slide, please. It has many components. We have over 2,000 users to this online service. We're connected to 44 electronic systems, which are primarily electronic health record systems, but they include public health and EMS. We connect over 100 organizations do just about 200,000 transactions a day and connect all types of health and wellness information, clinical, medical, mental health, substance abuse, public health, social referrals, and we are connected to the state's prescription drug monitoring program. Next slide, please. We do medical referrals. We have over 400,000 unique IDs in our system so we can properly identify you so we don't make a mistake. It's important, as you might expect, we'll just take my name to differentiate Daniel from Dan, from Danny, from Daniel James to DJ. Is that one person or five? We have an extensive historical database of over 35 million records. We are connected to national exchanges. So if you are traveling to the East Coast, we can get you your medical record there from Santa Cruz. We do deliver results like lab results uh, to your medical records. Uh, we do provide direct HIPAA compliant messaging and alerting. And we do this with seven full-time people. Next slide, please. And we're, we're back to Keisha to give you a, a sense of why we're doing this. So imagine your client, your patient, you have your medical records. There are needs in our community that we can connect you to. Imagine a, an organization like Skyo, since we've, we've heard the name, Skyo. Imagine Skyo and 211's database coming together to offer that supportive system of care where we can have referrals entered into the 211 system. We know the local community-based organizations. We know the various programs and services because you have profiles in the 211 database. You have profiles that are uploaded for free into our database system. That referral, once it comes through the 211 system, that referral is then sent to the health information exchange via an interface. Now that interface is to be determined. Dan and I are developing that and working uh, with a couple of uh, other partners to develop that interface. From there, we can identify and confirm and consent recorded and or confirmed identities. Shia will then receive the 211 referral data based on what that patient says, based on what that health clinic says, we'll be able to refer that data to Shio and display it on the Health Information Exchange community record. When the referral status is updated in the 211 system, Shio will receive an updated status and display in the HIE. It's a way that we can fully track and be along someone's journey on their continuum of care and services and needs. Next slide, please. And with the data elements displayed in the health information exchange, 
We can refer to which organization. We can, we can track that. Which organization did we make the referral to? And what date did we make the referral to? We'll be able to show the status of that referral. Is it still open? Does our, is it an opportunity for our call specialist to go back and, and ping that, that uh, nonprofit again? Or has it been accepted? We made the referral. That CBO or that community-based organization accepted the referral and they're following up with that patient. We also be able to tell if it was rejected, rejected for different reasons. Um, you know, there's a long wait list. We can also track if it's been completed and closed. And with all of that, we will again, know the date in which these things took place so that we can keep record of the status of a client accessing the very vital services and programs that they need. In our community, as we were talking about that interface, just want uh, our community to know that you now, uh, Unite Us, also uh, NowPow, they will be incorporated into the future of implementation. So we believe in that trifecta approach that you will have SHIO, 211, and Unite Us working together, again, to uplift and raise our uh, clients and patients here that they are accessing the health and programs that they need. Next slide, please. So what's happening in the state of California, just to set the stage, is we've got a tremendous amount of change going on. And 2023 will be a very big year for implementing change with programs reimbursement and providing more information as to what's going on with individuals, with families, with neighborhoods, and our entire population in Santa Cruz County. Uh, the Medi-Cal reformation is called Cal-AIM. In addition to Cal-AIM and going on in parallel is something called the Data Exchange Framework, which is a law that was passed a year and a half ago in response to AB 133. These two major statewide programs impact almost the entire health and wellness ecosystem in the state and particularly in our county. And what this will do will drive much more fluid, real-time information about health and wellness of individuals, families, neighborhoods, and our entire population in Santa Cruz County. Next slide, please. Both initiatives impact the entire ecosystem and really connect the entire ecosystem in ways that have never done before. And that's why it's just so important for SCIO and 211 to be connected. That's all just, it's just a great example of what we're trying to do here in the state, which is to have maximum impact and availability, access and equity to health and wellness in our community. And so there's a lot to do here. And Keisha and I both felt strongly and strategically this would provide more availability of services and information to you, the public, individuals, families, as well as those that provide care, our hospitals, our clinics, our doctors, our social services agencies, our counties, by making this union happen in terms of information sharing. Slide, please. And, and so this is a slide in, in prepping, uh, actually that the Nicole's brought to our attention that you see the US compared to other countries, we don't spend nearly as much as a percentage contribution to social services. And this is why I believe other countries perhaps have better health and wellness in our own country is that they're much more balanced in the investment that they make in social care versus medical care. So again, this effort, this union between United Way 211 Santa Cruz and SCIO 
will make a big effort in Santa Cruz County towards this aim. Next slide, please. Keisha, back to you. Yeah. So when we look at all of this work and it tees up to you know, the why, why are we coming together? When we look at the social determinants of health, uh, the most recent uh, survey collection from 2023, Dan will have to help me with all these fancy acronyms at the bottom in terms of the of where the data came from. But when you look at the social determinants of health, uh, the largest percentage, uh, the largest domain, when we look at the domains, the largest percentage is in health and health care, then followed by housing insecurity, economic stability, then food insecurity. Then there's the unknown reasons. It could be multiple transportation and education. So we really have an opportunity with 211 being a resource database. So um, we, can, we can distribute information that is given. So again, depending on wonderful agencies like the ones you lead, making sure that your information is up to date and accurate as new health and uh, human service organizations are coming up in our community to get them included and on board in the, our database, we would have a better and a stronger opportunity to track a person's continuum of care in partnership with Skyo. This is what we want to impact. When I look at some of our uh, partners on the call here from the Alliance, I just think, imagine, imagine if we were to decrease higher users of emergency uh, room, emergency department visits. Imagine if we could decrease urgent care visits because we are on the front end of helping to connect patients with local vital services and programs that are here in the community. And the more that that information stays up to date and accurate in 211, the stronger we will be in providing real-time services um, and referrals to our clients and patients. Next slide, please. So Dan. just some, yeah, thanks. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, just some more reinforcement of why we're doing this. Um, Keisha just gave you a great overview of the social drivers of health, but information and the digital divide is also a big driver of health. And what we're doing is a natural extension of previous programs. You may have you re might remember whole person care and together we care, but in order to really implement these programs, we need more complete information about individuals, about families, about neighborhoods. So whole person care requires whole person information and it really must put the person at the center. Next, next click please. And we have to remember that equity has two parts, opportunity and outcome. And oftentimes we think opportunity is just that access to the medical or clinical care but that outcome is really dependent on programs and social services. And so in order for us to have complete health, we need to have both parts, opportunity and outcome. Next click. And so as such, we're moving to a much more uh, utility-like model as it relates to health and its corresponding information. Uh, we have to learn from the pandemic and we have to learn from the previous programs into a much more comprehensive, total approach to health and wellness in Santa Cruz County. Next slide, please. And as such, we need much more representation by our social services agencies and community-based organizations. And as such, this 211 integration with Skyo makes that happen. We have to take advantage of these investments that have already been made and leverage those, uh, both from the whole person care perspective and the together we care perspective. We need to improve our data, our data standards and our data sharing. We need to leverage future technological offerings like 
using our cell phones to make a lot of this happen. That provides you the proper controls and oversight to where your data is going and how is it being shared. And we need to make this a little more simple and a lot less hassle in terms of what are we sharing and how we're going about sharing that. You can call it a release of information or ROI, or you can call it consent. But we're really making sure that that happens in a uniform manner. And that's also one of the advantages of 211, Santa Cruz, and Skyo coming together. And next slide, please. Uh, just some more uh, information provided by this final report by the University of Chicago, that's NORC. And AHIMA is the American Health Information Management Association. That is the management association of our medical records professionals. They see this data every single day. Nobody knows it better. And, and so you'll see that we're doing a better job of collecting this information, but we're not doing the best job of sharing and integrating this. And that's also what this union between 211 Santa Cruz and Skyo is trying to do is integrate this better, store it, and make it readily available to those who need to see it when they need to see it. Next slide, please. And so just to reinforce why we're doing this, again, this whole person view, everything that's going on, not just the clinical aspect, not just the doctor and nurse interactions, but all interactions uh, with that wellness and the health community in our, in our county. We wanna provide a much greater uh, representation of the continuum of care. Again, really reaching out beyond just medical and clinical care. We need to really unify what is health and human services and make that a unified present presentation is make that available to all who need to see it. Uh, we want everyone in the county to utilize this and therefore no one is compromised or shortened, um, shortchanged in this presentation of information. So from North County to South County, this will be a uniform presentation of individuals. And then regardless of your population, children, elder care, or regardless of race and ethnicity and religion, we want that balanced presentation as well. And by doing this, we'll have a much better chance of achieving uniform population health and wellness across our county. Next slide, please. And so just some more uh, findings from this very important survey that was done and concluded in 2023. Um, you see that only about 32% of referrals are going to community-based organizations. We need to raise that number. That will allow us to identify and assess uh, needs at the community level, at the neighborhood level uh, better. We'd like to get right to the population track uh, and figure out what those needs are. And that way we can also build capacity and apply resources a little bit better uh, per neighborhood and then make this case for our county with the state um, and change policy as required and needed in Santa Cruz County. Next slide, please. And we've got to do a much better job of sharing, right? We're really breaking down the silos of information to allow this to happen, uh, regardless if it's a clinical referral between doctors or a hospital and a doctor, or between a hospital, a doctor, and a social service program. So we're gonna to try to make it much more comprehensive and complete. Next slide, please. So, so with that, we will pause for questions. I know that was a lot of information. I, I know uh, really looking forward to working with Keisha and her team at United Way Santa, 211 Santa Cruz, but please we'll open it up for questions. Um, I haven't seen any in chat, uh, but please, yeah, or in the polls. Mm -hmm. We have a few questions that came through in the chat, so we'll start with those, and then we'll open it up to see if anyone wants to ask one out loud. Um, so the first question in the chat is, uh, will you in the future, or do you have a recording of how 2 on 1 works to help people with housing? 
Yes, well, that is a great question. And the role that 211 plays, I want to make sure because I like to um, call people by their names here. Thank you, Dana, for that, um, for the question. The role that 211 plays is connecting with um, the referrals. So again, the more uh, the more programs and services that are offered in our county linked to housing, whether that is shelter, that is housing vouchers, that is housing for health with our county, the more accurate and up-to-date profiles that we have in our 211 database, that is what we um, are able to refer and, and put out uh, with callers or providers who call and inquire. That's just one example of, you know, the role we play. If I may add on to that, Keisha, yes. uh, housing traditionally has been a human service. As we can appreciate, housing impacts health. So as we move forward together in what we're talking about, we can do a better job of determining one's housing status and how that impacts their health. And we're breaking down those policy, those laws, and those data barriers to give that whole picture. Housing's a great, great subject of a data silo that we are working very hard to break down to give that total picture of one's health and wellness where housing is a major influence. So that might be a good topic for a future coffee chat once uh, <laughs> once once you get farther or once there are more, you know, uh, if you want to encourage more housing programs to be listed in 211 and Dan, through your efforts, if there are new solutions and uh, to some of those barriers, that, that would make for a great topic for the future. We have another question in the chat about what will nonprofits who are presently presently listed on two and one, what do they have to do for this new tracking of referrals? And is that uh, is this something that they'll be able to access? Yes, great question, sir. And I also want to acknowledge, sir, for the work that, that's being done. And I know about those printed directories. I saw that in the chat too. So I just want to acknowledge you for the work that you do in, in making sure that those things get out. Um, but when it comes to those who are already in the system, that's the beauty of it. You're already there. So depending on the kinds of questions, depending on how much information a caller is willing to share, um, it's why we ask. Uh, our, our, our call specialists do, uh, some may say investigate, but we do ask various questions because we want to be sure that we're helping with various needs that a person has. When you are in the system, um, when you're in the database, let me say it that way, when you're in the 211 database, there's not an, an, an additional leg you need to lift. You are in there. You are in there. Um, there's things that we can maybe, our team can maybe partner with you on, like keywords, because depending on the response of the caller, various um, agencies and services pop up. So let's say a person's calling, I'm in Watsonville, but I live at this top of the hill. I don't have transportation, type one diabetes. I need a special diet, um, special dietary needs. Um, then the more that they're saying, the more that that caller is saying and relaying, those key words are what, um, how referrals do get popped up. So um, you being in the system already, we know uh, you're one of your agencies, I would say, you're already in the system. There's not an additional leg you need to lift. You are there ready to be referred. If I may add, Keisha, um, with this new relationship, we will require individuals' consent to make this information sharing happen. So I, I, I do believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, Keisha, this might be a new step in the 211 process yes. to get uh, folks permission to share this information. The other way that that happens, just so you all know, is what it was in one of, I think, uh, Keisha's slides, a social script. 
So if you get your doctor to prescribe a program, which can then be implemented to 211, given that this is a doctor's prescription, if you will, then we have permission to share because it's for treatment purposes. So, so that's going to be one small change. And Keisha and I will maintain a database that is shared and visible to both of us, both organizations, not to us personally, both organizations, uh, where we can maintain those consents, releases of information, or social scripts. And then a related question. So for the nonprofits that do receive referrals from 211, Will they be able to see what other services are being offered to the client or what other organizations are connected to that client so that there can be other coordination of care among those organizations? Or is that that sharing of information, is that basically a two-way relationship between 211 and whichever organization the referral went to? It's a great question, Nicole. And unfortunately, it's one of those lousy answers. It depends, right? It really depends on the transaction and the referral. If it's based on a social script, right, the doctor's order or a nurse's order, or a, a physician's assistant's order, chances are we can share more information and coordinate care a little bit better. This is a big change for us. We fully recognize uh, that we're broadening information sharing that we need individuals or guardians permissions to make this happen. And so we can't just get all the information out there. That's not our intent. Our intent is to share information as appropriate, as required to improve an individual's care. And the individual's part of that process. So it's not, it's just not a black and white answer. It really does depend on the situation. Okay. Um, and then the next couple of things in the chat are um, more some comments or observations, but I'm going to still read them out loud. And maybe Keisha, if you want to, and Dan, if you want to share any thoughts about that or how you think that this new partnership might help with some of these things. Um, the calls to 211 are very complicated. They investigate you, use that word, investigate you a lot, and people are afraid to give information. Um, and then the reality of, you know, sometimes clinics don't have appointments available, and that can be the reason why families end up in the emergency room. And um, I wonder if both of you want to share any thoughts about that, and again, how your new partnership might help address some of those. Yeah, um, I mean, you know, there's, uh, I shared the reasons why, a great observation that the reasons of the questions is to make sure that we're providing a holistic approach that if there's a variety of things that a person may need, that's why those questions are getting asked. And a caller does have a right to say, no, I'm not interested in that. I just want this. And that's fine. It's fine to do. We're doing our job to make sure that if there are other needs that you may have, that you may not have thought about at the time that you called, that we're just doing our due diligence. And a caller, again, always has the, the right to say, you know what, I don't wanna ask those questions, I just want this. And, and we're happy to do that. Yeah, I, I would just add that, um... Expansion of the two services coming together gives people more choices. And, and the intent is to do a better job of coordinating care and broadening care to make sure we hit as many service areas as we can so that individuals can have the very best health and wellness that they could possibly have. So there's this is going to, yes, this will change over time as a little bit more. And so to get to the more, sometimes we have to interrogate more so we can refine our service. So for, from the get-go, it's not going to be perfect. It will be an expansion. There may be a few more questions to ask, a few more qualifications to ask. But this will provide individuals, when it's all said and done, more readily accessible services and care that they may require. And, and so... Um, it, it's going to be an evolution. It's going to be a learning process for all. 
doctors, hospitals, clinics, as well as the CBOs and social services agency and our 211 service. We're really looking forward to making this happen. And uh, before I move on to some of the more technical questions that were asked in the chat, um, the most recent question was asking, do you have trouble getting information from undocumented Spanish speaking people who call or contact two on one? And if so, what alternative might be available for them? Mm -hmm. We do have over 170 languages spoken with 211. Um, we're able to really communicate because we're not looking for a person's immigration status. That's not a reason to uh, deny anyone access to any of our services in Santa Cruz County. Um, but Dana, we will continue to commit to uh, tweaking, changing, growing, and improving if we find that some uh, of our family and friends who feel that they're not getting services or not being reached or served, we will do our part to stretch to make sure that they are. But we do have, uh, because we're not really asking for those uh, kinds of questions to, to provide referrals or information on how to access services and programs. Dan, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, it, it, yeah such a great point, Keisha. Uh, please know that Skyo will be person or individual facing by the end of this calendar year. And so you will be able to see what is in the health information exchange, health information organization about you. Uh, we are hoping to offer that service by the end of this year in both English and Spanish. So we are committed uh, to providing people the tools that they need, whether it be the telephonic voice-based tools of 211 Santa Cruz or the digital tools that are offered by Skyo to make sure people have the tools that they need themselves to manage their and their loved ones care. And then this is probably a good follow-up question to that answer, Dan, how do the two systems deal with cybersecurity? So it, I, I, I can only speak for Skyo. I can, I can tell you that our handoff is secure. So, and we're working hard to make this on par with each other, but we can bring two systems together. So we do encrypt everything in transport and at rest. Um, given that everything that's in Skyo is protected health information, we live up to the highest standards required by our largest organizations in the state and even nationally. So whether it be Kaiser, or Sutter, or Stanford, or the Department of Defense, the Veterans Administration, we have those standards in terms of cybersecurity that we live up to. And we're getting additional certifications as such. And I'll turn it over to Keisha to speak to how 211 protects its information. Yeah. Same thing, Jeffrey. It's uh, encrypted. It's why it took us this long, right? Skyle's been in our community. Since 96, we've been around since 2010. We're very particular about who to link to because we have to protect our, our data and our information. And we want to make sure that anyone we partners with follows the same strict guidance that we do. So with our information, we follow the same path that Dan follows about inscripted and, and um, just knowing that things can't be scraped. Um, we, we follow that same rigor and practice to protect, to protect data, for sure. And then the last question that came through in the chat, I think is asking, has Skyo put out any data picture of Santa Cruz reports? I'm not sure if that's what the person who posed the question was, was asking. So yeah, ha happy to speak to that. So, so Skyo does not publish data. We have no secondary uses of data. Our participants do. So that seems like, I don't understand completely the origination of the question, but that's like a public health function. So we sit behind public health and we support public health so that they can do their jobs, including publishing. So anything, as it relates to that is not our role. Our role is to move data, 
keep it secure, improve the data and the like. It is not our job to be public facing. It's our job to support those who's got that primary mission to be public facing and support those entities with better information. That includes the state of California, that includes public health at the county level, it includes ambulance companies and the like. But we do not publish data. It's not our data. We're stewards of data. We make it better, we standardize it, we move it. It's a great question. How about any other questions that anybody would like to ask? Is there anything else that anyone would like to come off of mute and ask? While someone's thinking of a question, I do want to just, because um, I was getting ready to type this in the chat for sir, because again, I just know of the directory. Um, 211, we're actually working with um, iCarol, the 211 database, to help be able to print a more um, user-friendly PDF file of a directory. And while we all know, moment you hit print, it can become outdated if there's a new program or service that's brought into town. And we also recognize the importance that some people can't get to a telephone all the time or a website. Um, and so to be able to hand out a directory is also important for our community. Uh, so, sir, we are working on that. And I will keep you in the loop because I know that you're the guru of getting these kinds of directories out into our community. Thanks for that, Keisha. Any other questions? For Dan or Keisha. Okay, I think we're ready to move to our wrap up. And so I'm gonna launch a feedback poll. We'd love to have you um, provide us your thoughts and feedback about today's session. We do look at all of the responses and that helps us plan future Court Institute events. And speaking of, we have um, three on the calendar so far. So next week, there's going to be a community meeting on tobacco product waste. And it's an opportunity to not only learn about kind of the health and environmental and equity implications of um, environmental waste that's created by single use tobacco products, but to also provide input to the city of Santa Cruz's health and all policies team about some policy options the city council is considering. So. Um, if you are interested in that topic, I encourage you to sign up for that. That's next Tuesday from 10 to 11.15. And then we have two more of our um, harnessing local data to create the core conditions um, events that are coming up that we do in partnership with DataShare. And so the one in April will feature a safe, just community. And then in June, we'll feature stable, affordable housing and shelter. And those are the sessions where we take a look at the data that's in data share for different core conditions and have discussions about how do we make meaning of that? What data exists? What's missing? What's the story behind the data? How do we turn that into actionable data? Uh, so we encourage you to sign up for any or all of those and we will continue to add more events to the Core Institute calendar. Um, so keep an eye out for those emails from us. Again, just want to thank Keisha and Dan for taking the time to uh, prepare this presentation for us, to share all this great information. Definitely invite you to keep us in the loop and come back at, at a later point uh, when you are launching and have some lessons learned and successes to share. And um, I appreciate all the information that you shared with us today. Thank you to Stella and Gisela for interpreting and translating and keeping up with all of us. Thanks, everyone.